Welcome to Unit 13, Video 3, Limiting Reactant. By the end of this video, you should understand what a limiting reactant and an excess reactant is. You should be able to identify which reactant will be limiting, both mathematically and in a picture representation. You should be able to perform stoichiometric calculations using the limiting reactant. And you should be able to calculate the percent yield of a reaction. Let's start with a non-chemistry example. Consider the reactants or ingredients below. We want to use these ingredients to make a cheeseburger. Pause the video here and try to determine which of these reactants or ingredients will run out first. And therefore, how many burgers will you be able to make? Welcome back. You should have determined that you'll be able to make three complete cheeseburgers because our burger patties will run out first. Therefore, in this case, our burger patties were our limiting reactant. They limited how many burgers we, will a we were able to make. Even though we had more buns, cheese, and tomatoes, we couldn't make any more cheeseburgers because our limiting reactant had run out. On the other hand, our excess reactants are burgers, cheese, and tomatoes. Notice we had more than enough to go with our three burger patties. Therefore, some will be left over. So again, our burger patties are, uh, are our limiting reactant, and our burger bun, tomato, and cheese are our excess reactant. In chemistry, a limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out first and thus limits the amount of product formed, just like our burger patties in the previous example. An excess reactant is a reactant that you have extra of. Some of this reactant will remain after the reaction is complete, just like our burger buns, cheese, and tomato in the previous example. Take a look at this example of a particle diagram of a reaction between H2 gas and O2 gas to form H2O. In the box on the left, you see the particles before the reaction. Notice that no water molecules are present because the reaction has not proceeded yet. We haven't formed any. Take a look at this diagram and try to figure out which reactant was limiting and which one was in excess. You should have noticed that we have some O2 molecules left over after the reaction. Therefore, O2 was our excess reactant and H2 was our limiting reactant. The H2 molecules ran out first, therefore limiting how many water molecules we were able to make. When performing calculations involving a limiting reactant, there are several steps we need to follow. First, and always in stoichiometry, we need to write a balanced equation for the process we're looking at. Then, we need to determine how many moles of each reactant we have. Since you're usually given masses of reactants, this will, this will involve dividing by the molar mass to convert to moles. Then, you'll use the mole ratio to determine which reactant will run out first. Therefore, you'll determine which reactant is limiting. From there, you proceed like a normal uh, stoichiometry calculation using the limiting reactant to determine the moles and then the mass of product formed. Here's an example. We'll try this together. Take a second to read the question and then we'll work through it. In this example, notice we have an unbalanced equation. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is balance our equation. We're going to start by putting a 3 in front of our oxygen and a 2 in front of our Al2O3, giving us 6 oxygens on both sides. This will necessitate a 4 in front of our aluminum to give us 4 aluminums on both sides. This equation is now balanced. So first we're asked to determine which reactant is limiting. We need to now convert our masses of reactants into moles. So I have 10 grams of aluminum. My molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams. So this gives me 0.371 moles of aluminum. Repeating for oxygen, I have 10 grams of O2. The molar mass of O2 is 32.0 grams, giving me 
0.313 moles of oxygen. I now know how many moles of each reactant I have. From there, I can use the mole ratio to determine how much of each reactant I need. So from here, you can choose either reactant to work with. I'm going to choose aluminum just because it's listed first. So I'm going to start with my mole ratio between aluminum and oxygen. So from the balanced equation, I know that for every four moles of aluminum, I'll need four moles of oxygen. In this case, I have 0.371 moles of aluminum. So I want to know how many moles of oxygen I'll need to accompany that four moles of aluminum. Solving for x, I find that I'll need 0.278 moles of oxygen to completely use up 0.371 moles of aluminum. From here, I need to compare the amount of moles of oxygen I need to the amount of moles of oxygen I have. You'll notice that I have far more oxygen than I've just found out that I needed. Therefore, oxygen will be in excess. This means that aluminum will be our limiting reactant because it will run out first. We have more than enough oxygen to go with this amount of aluminum. This means that aluminum will determine how much product we'll get. So now I can complete my stoichiometric calculation using my limiting reactant. Again, from my balanced equation, I know that for every four moles of aluminum, I'll get two moles of aluminum oxide, but I actually have 0.371 moles of aluminum, so I want to know how many moles of Al2O3 I'll be able to form. Solving for x, I find that I'll be able to produce 0.186 moles of aluminum oxide given the amount of aluminum I started with. Since the question asks for mass of aluminum oxide, I can now convert this value to mass by multiplying by the molar mass of aluminum oxide, which is 102 grams per mole. Completing this calculation, I find that I can produce 19 grams of aluminum oxide, given the amount of aluminum I started with. Finally, we can use this information to calculate a percent yield. The values we've been calculating given our limiting reactant are called theoretical yields. This is the amount of product we should be able to produce. In a perfect world, if everything went perfectly and our reaction went perfectly and our collection of our product went perfectly, we should be able to produce this much of our product. However, that pretty much never happens. In reality, you usually get less than what you should have gotten. So we can calculate a percent yield. Percent yield is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. For instance, in our previous example, we found that our theoretical yield was 19.0 grams of aluminum oxide. But imagine instead of 19 grams of aluminum oxide, we had actually managed to produce 17.5 grams of aluminum oxide. I can divide 17.5 times 19, multiply by 100%, and I find that my percent yield is 92.1%. Not too shabby. Here's an example to try on your own. Pause the video here and try to determine the limiting reactant, the amount of product we can produce, and the percent yield of this reaction. Don't forget to start with a balanced equation. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we defined a limiting reactant as the reactant that runs out first, therefore limiting the amount of product we formed and the excess reactant as the reactant that we'll have extra of, so some will be left over. Then we looked at how to determine which reactant will be limiting, both mathematically by converting to moles and comparing the ratios, 
and in pictures by figuring out what's left over after the reaction. Then we learn to perform stoichiometric calculations using the limiting reactant. And finally, we learn to calculate the percent yield of a reaction by dividing the actual yield by the theoretical yield.